Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how I did this project in Revit. I'm not really going to do any modeling today, but I'll show you step by step what I did. And if I have videos explaining how I did specific parts of the video, I'll let you know in, in the description below. I'll leave a few comments if I create new videos for that in the future, I'll add the comments as well. And if you do find something that you'd like me to explain better, please just say, I'll try to do it if I have the time. So the main idea for this case study was to understand better how to integrate another software with different capabilities in a design workflow that uses Revit. So the software that I chose was Fusion 360 from Autodesk but it would work if you're using Rhino or something else, I believe. The idea was to explore this fine modeling and be able to do these forms that you wouldn't be able to do in Revit. So be able to create something different and then show how to integrate uh, with the Revit workflow. So you can use the software for what it's best at and then as long as you know how to integrate it and how, how to use it together. So I wanted to do this uh, this undulated form that would create an entrance and a, a roof structure. But the idea was to have this fluidity and the way I did it was with Fusion. Uh, the interiors though, they were all made with Revit. I did all the retail shops and all this case study from program requirements. I did the area studies, I did a, to a dynamo that created the, the rooms from uh, an excel sheet and uh, a few things like that. But then these panels on the roof were also created in Revit of course and uh, then applied to the fusion surface creating this uh, one panel that would change from opaque to a fabric to a, a glazing as the, the roof undulates. So the actual way I, how I did it was I started in Revit, I created these areas, these volumes in Revit, the car park on the, the east side and the, there is a supermarket underneath this area and a few shops and then what I wanted was this mantle that would undulate, create the roof higher in certain areas would open up to, to create the entrances in different areas to this kind of organic uh, form. After I did this in Revit, the first part in Revit, with the buildings and the volumes, then I exported as a DWG and I imported it into Fusion. Once in Fusion, I can use the planes from Revit and I just started modeling uh, this mantle. After I finished the mantle in Fusion, I export it as I said SAT and then use it in Revit. Then uh, as I, I did this in Fusion, I wanted to do the this fluid path that enlarges and narrows in certain areas. It, was, it wasn't always uh, perfectly smooth because in Fusion is still there's still a, a bit manual process how you manu change this form. I could still find a few spots where it wasn't really a continuous curve but because Fusion has all these tools that I had a video before the, video, the link is also below uh, where you can analyze the curvature of the surfaces you can use all these tools together and be able to analyze as you are changing the form in the end I did something like this that it wasn't so bad as a design study to work. So then, as you bring it into Revit, in Revit you start an in-place mass. From the in-place mass editing mode, you import this uh, SAT file. And when you have it in Revit, you can actually select it and use it as if it was a, a normal mass form in Revit. You can divide the grid and uh, apply other components, Revit components to it. Uh, so it should work quite well. So if you notice, I did do a second uh, face here. I just copied the first one I, and I dragged down in certain areas uh, because I wanted to achieve this thickness of the panels that would uh, vary 
so it's not just going up and down in the form uh, but also is thickening in, in this varying of the thickness of between the two surfaces is the parameter that's going to create the opaque fabric or glazing uh, material is one single adaptive component family place that measures this distance between the top and bottom surface and changes as this distance varies i do have a video as well for this one you can check the video and let me know if you have any comments uh, but at the bottom I wanted this second surface because I'd like to pull down and uh, maybe have the columns line up here uh, so, so I wanted to be able to manipulate this in the two sides of the roof <coughs> I wanted to manipulate this in the two sides of the roof but anyway the other step in Revit was create these families I had this uh, panel that using some trigonometry I could measure the angles from two sides of the panel to, to establish the position of the sun and as these angles would change this color would change so I could have a analysis based on the color of the panels the two in the bottom are a deflection analysis so this one would also change color give you a visual analysis of the panel so when I load it into the project I would apply it in the surface and just use the repeat command that automatically creates all the panels for me and the, the colors would automatically change if I select one of the panels and I change the, the two parameters that I had created uh, with the two angles I could establish the position of the sun in the morning or in the evening and I could say that in the morning the panels that are more exposed are these in red and the ones that are less exposed the sun are the ones in green if I would uh, apply I don't even have to apply it I just have to select the orientation panel and swap it for the deflection panel and automatically I would get the colors for the deflection in this case although it failed quite a few uh, panels I could see that the green ones are probably flat enough but the yellow ones uh, are twisted may be acceptable the red ones uh, probably are too uh, twisted and probably are not buildable so you'd have to get some parameters from the manufacturer to see uh, if you'd have to go back to fusion and try to smooth this out until you don't get any red panel so in the end I would apply the adaptive component family and get these uh, panels changing According to my undulation. So this was just a, a case study. I was allowed to make a few errors, not really finish everything or solve every problem. Maybe I would have done a few things better. I'd love to have the time to uh, make this look a bit better because you can see a few of the errors and maybe change the materials, improve the smoothness of the surface and test a few things more but uh, it's the time I had so I did what I could anyway the, the end result it's not that bad but you can see what the tool can do this roof in the interior I, I quite like the fabric how it swapped maybe it could change in a different way uh, I would like to study this uh, better um, the interior where it connects with the retail glazing integrate that a little bit better or maybe do something different altogether with it. the glazing here and and the way the interior I didn't spend much time in the interior anyway.
I know that I didn't explain much how I did everything. If you like the video, please press like so I, I know uh, that you'd like to see more of these or just comment to let me know and if I if I can I'll definitely create another video or do something or respond to your comments to explain how I did it but anyway thank you for watching see you next time